y'all, it's Emily Rand with ESPN Esports, and I'm joined by FlyQuest Power of Evil after FlyQuest have qualified to the NA Grand Finals. So first of all, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. This also means that you qualify as either the first or second seed for North America. So I'll start there. Uh, how important do you think it is to qualify as a higher seed or do you think that it could also be beneficial to actually have to go through play-ins and kind of adjust to the meta? Because I know s certain teams have like one one perspective or another on it. Um, honestly, I don't think we were thinking too much about seeding yet. Um, mm -hmm. We were thinking about obviously like not playing the play-ins, so I felt like we were happy about that, just getting out of, out of qualified into the groups. Um, Similar to, um, I guess, my worlds here in Misfits 2017, mm -hmm. I think we made a second seed. So uh, we definitely have that secure, which is obviously really nice. And now, obviously, like the last step is to win it all and then um, just take it at one step at a time at groups. Yeah, so you guys, I know uh, they asked Wild Turtle about this on broadcast, but you guys now are, you know, pretty much the most consistent team in North America over the entire year in terms of performance and where you ended up uh, both splits. And I feel like a lot of your growth as a team has actually come from having to run through so many playoff games. Um, so talk me through the format and how you guys feel about it and whether you think it's actually helped you adjust to the current meta a lot better. So the spring split definitely helped us uh, with the double elimination bracket. Um, we obviously lost the first best of five against EG and then made all the way to the finals. And I feel like um, all of this made us grow as a team and kind of like this, like if you make this way from the lower bracket to the grand finals, it's like a huge accomplishment. And I think it's similar to what TSM is doing right now. I feel like it's going to be like, they're going to have a lot of momentum coming in to these best of fives now. And I feel like we just learned a lot. I feel like we, transitioned at that time uh, from Viper to Solo 2, so it helped us getting more games in, and yeah, I feel like nowadays, um, I feel like we are really confident in our best of fives, we are, um, I think, a really versatile team, uh, the players are really, um, I feel like they really know what they want and um, what they're good at, and I feel like in the drafts we can adapt on certain situations, and yeah, I feel like um, we don't need to be afraid of anyone. Yeah, I actually really like your uh, meta read and your drafts uh, thus far in this playoffs. Um, one thing I've noticed about your team that I think is really interesting, given the ongoing discussion of how important it is to stack drakes, is that you guys will actually often eschew going for early drakes, depending on composition, um, and then end up fighting over that third drake and winning uh, with the advantages that you've accrued from leaning, et cetera. So talk me through that decision and why you guys have kind of come to the conclusion that this has been a better call than necessarily fighting over those early drakes and stacking early because it's still worked out for you. Like you've still been able to stack drakes from third on. Um, I feel like it really depends on the comms you're facing and mm -hmm. what comm you are playing. It's like really different from game to game. And a good example is in the C9 series, I feel like normally we had the early game comps and the strong early game push. So we managed to get these really early souls of like three, four dragons, like um, not giving up a single dragon. And today it was mainly like we would give up one or two dragons and then like make our way to the souls because um, of different situations. Like either they would have a really, really strong early game comp or we would get like a few gold, we would get gold instead of um, focusing on a dragon. So like we would like, let's say like, look for the five plates on solo, um, maybe get a tower dive onto impact and then just use that gold that we get him, like this one point one or 2k gold lead and use it afterwards for the dragon fights um, in the later stages of the game. And I feel like that really worked out for us. Yeah, I think it's really smart. I see a lot of uh, Chinese teams doing that too, especially if they want to fight like mid to late a little bit more. Um, going into game five, one of the things that really struck me is how you came out with like all of the momentum in that game, despite, uh, I would say kind of a, an unfortunate loss in game four. So talk me through how you guys recovered mentally, because not only do you seem to have a really good meta read, but FlyQuest as a team seems to have a really good mentality, regardless of what happens. 
So definitely game four was pretty shocking. Um, the, I feel like it was pretty much all in our hands and then we kind of threw it away. And that's obviously like always really, really um, brutal. But after the game, everyone just said what they felt and they said like, oh man, th that's sad, that's unfortunate. But I feel like we are a team of veterans. We are a team of really, really experienced players. So we just said like, Guys, in every game, I feel like even in the games that we lost, we were really proactive, and I feel like we were doing all the plays. Um, I think it was the game two or something that we lost pretty hard, but I feel like we always went for the plays, and they kind of just reacted. So we were confident that we can win it in game five, and everyone just took like a five to ten minute break, like, you know, got some fresh air, ate some fruits, and it was just like, we came back, reset it, we said it's the best of one now, and... Let's just go in strong. And I feel like this team is really experienced in these situations because we have really, really old players. And I feel like that's really helping us in these best of fives. And then I have to ask, I know players always hate this question, but is there a team that you'd rather face in grand finals or does it just not matter to you at all? Um, honestly, I am not worried about either one of them. I feel like I would have been the most worried about C9 mm -hmm. because... Even so, we won against them in our best of five. I feel like they were kind of our kryptonite the entire regular season. And even so, we convincingly won the 3-1. I feel like it would have been like a way more closer series next time when we face them off. And now with them being out, I think TSM and um, TL, they're both strong opponents. And today we went all the way with 3-2. But mm -hmm. I think we can beat them both. And I feel like we, we don't need to be afraid of any one of them. I think cool. all our players are... Sorry to interrupt. I feel like all yeah, of our yeah. players are really, really strong. I feel like um, we proved um, most people wrong a lot of times. And I think um, I would say every player in this team is like top two in their respected roles. And I feel like really showcased that the entire playoffs and I feel like both the, this entire year. So that's also been kind of a running theme with your team. And that was kind of the question I wanted to end on, which you led into very well. So thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> why do you think that uh, either like analysts or the community in general have been a little bit more down on you than you would expect from the results you've had this year? Um, I'm honestly not too sure. I feel like if you think all the way back to when Igna and me joined, it was kind of like, I, 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 if I remember correctly, people were saying like we were a seven, eighth place team. It was like pretty bad seeing us. And then we proved them wrong. We made it all the way to the finals. I feel like that's when actually people started saying like, okay, this is a really good team. And then in finals, we obviously lost O3. So maybe people lost some confidence in that mm -hmm. uh, because Cloud9 convincingly won against us there. And then I feel like in summer split, it was kind of the C9 and the TL show, I would say, mostly. So we were kind of in the background again, but we secretly made made our way to the third place again, to the third seed, and then, uh, yeah, found our, found our way to the um, grand finals. And I feel like um, I feel like we proved it like now the entire year. I think we are an insanely strong team. I feel like um, everyone's doing insanely well. I'm really happy about my own performance. I feel like uh, I was happy that I could pull out so many different picks the last best of fives. This one was a little more <laughs> more boring, but um, just bringing that stability in is obviously really important too. Well, all the best going forward into grand finals uh, and also going into worlds. So congratulations on Thank not having much. to go through the play in bracket. <laughs> Thank you. And for more League of Legends coverage, keep it here on ESPN Esports.